Okay. We are live. Hi, everyone. Um, it is, if we're here, it's Wednesday night, although coming, this is exciting. Uh, I've had so much interest in uh, Better Nutrition Program expert interviews that we've expanded to 1215 on Fridays. Um, and I know for a lot of you, that means absolutely nothing because you watch this on YouTube or you watch it where I share the link with you um, at a time that's better for you. And I love that. Um, my whole goal here is just to help introduce you to the experts that I turn to to answer questions um, about how do we make better choices. And so uh, to my right or left or however that directionally is right now, uh, in lovely California, we have Dr. Sandra Carter. So there's Sandra's here. And um, I have been fascinated with mushrooms. It was really one of those hate-love situations for me. Um, so early on in my life, mushrooms were, they weren't just something I didn't like. They were something my mom said at, at times I lied and said I was allergic to them. I never had an allergy. Um, but that also I just was like, oh my gosh, I could tell if there was a mushroom on anything. And my mom actually really loved to cook with mushrooms. And so that was very disappointing. And then when I got involved in uh, integrative medicine, I learned um, so much about it from Paul Stamets and Dr. Andrew Weil and all these folks about the power of mushrooms. And so I started popping supplements and it was like a good long time. I was like, of course I want, you know, all these benefits, you know, and I, I learned about the quality of the supplements. And then one day somebody introduced me to shiitake fries and it was like a love affair. I don't know what happened. And now people joke that like for me, mushrooms is a food group. Um, but I think uh, I'm excited about that part, but even more so, I'm really excited about this world of understanding medicinal mushrooms. So, um, you know, I think that the history of our medicine is fascinating, and mushrooms certainly go back to um, really the earliest of time, and we'll talk about the, the fungal kingdom and the diversity there, um, and really the notion of what they have the power to do and how they can do it uniquely for um, each of us is uh, is really awesome. So a bit of housekeeping tonight. If you have questions or you just want to let us know where you're joining us from, um, you know, we always love hearing that part. We've got a special going tonight. Um, I interviewed Sandra ahead of this and we created the Better um, Medicinal Mushroom Nutrition Guide. Tonight you can save 30% off using the code BETTER30. And Sandra is um, behind her head uh, is all of these different products that we're actually going to talk about tonight. Oh, mushrooms. And you might also see in her credentials, M2 Ingredients, um, is a company that I've just grown to have the utmost respect for um, from, as I said, learning about from a science standpoint, the do's and the don'ts. And also really excited about um, the future of what we're learning and able to do, uh, whether it's in um, isolated components or in uh, you know, things that we're able to grow more safely and really bring you the value of medicinal mushrooms. So as I like to say, medicinal mushrooms have the power to totally help you reach your health goals if they are better. So tonight, that's our super long introduction to Sandra to say tonight we are here to dive into what is better um, on that part. And Sandra, I'm, and you guys are going to see me look down. You see this all the time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share this on a couple of our groups um, so that everybody gets to weigh in. Uh, remember, only if you're on the Better Nutrition Program page will I see your question tonight. Um, so if you do have a question, pop on over there on Facebook. Um, but Sandra, I'd love to have us start out with, um, I told my mushroom story, so maybe you can tell your <laughs> mushroom story. <laughs> sure. Well, thanks so much for having me today, <laughs> this evening, I guess, Ashley. Um, I started out actually in exercise physiology, and I'm Canadian, went to McGill University, moved to L.A. and have a, a Ph.D. in integrative medicine. So I know, know Dr. Andrew Weil from my integrative medicine days um, and became a hospital administrator, had done a lot of community health, um, and became extremely fascinated with mushrooms after attending a, a Scripps integrative medicine mm -hmm. conference. And they are so diverse in their benefits for cognitive health, for sports performance, for inflammation, from heart health, of course, for, for prevention as well and cellular uh, strength and, and prevention of mutations. And so I really became more and more interested going into 2009, 2010, was introduced to a mycologist, Steve Farrar, who was living here in San Diego, had been growing culinary mushrooms and um, decided to start a business at the end of 2010. I could see the interest. Andy Weil has had his, his pyramid, his anti-inflammatory pyramid, very much promoting uh, mushrooms. 
eat them in unlimited quantities is what they have in his pyramid. Uh, and then Dr. Oz in 2010 started doing um, regular features on mushrooms as well. So I think it's been, for me, absolutely wonderful to see what was something relatively unknown back mm -hmm. in 2010, other than sort of the early adopters. Um, and with, of course, Paul Stamets' wonderful TED Talks and education and growing the awareness, now people recognize the differences mm -hmm. between the unique species. And now also we're seeing, because not only do we have our own brand, but as you mentioned, we supply a lot of the major brands out there with their mushroom ingredients. So we are in everything from kombucha to bars, capsules, um, creams, all kinds of different products. So I, I'm, of course, very, very happy to see people getting the benefits for themselves and for their pets as well. I love it. Um, so we are actually, I'm going to tease to everyone right now, by the end of this conversation, we're going to talk a bit about what you should and should not choose by way of products. And that was actually one of the reasons that I reached out to you guys, because I'm actually, I'm equally excited as you to see the mushroom trend. Um, but I have a lot of trepidation, a lot of concern whenever something becomes trendy, that, um, you know, things, especially when something becomes trendy, that People are adding to their coffee or, or their teas or their supplements where it might be something you're having on a daily basis and it may actually be a negative contributor to their health. So one of the things that we're not going to jump in there right yet because I want everybody on board to hear what how do you actually choose a better product. But that is coming and that's also stuff that we shared in the, the um, very clearly in the guide uh, that you can get over at the Better Nutrition Shop. So I wanted to start out, you know, I, I started off talking about eating them or taking them as a supplement. So when we talk about medicinal mushrooms, you know, you and I both have this um, integrative medical background and one of the things that we love is the notion of integrating food and beverages and um, and then like thinking about how our medicine can factor into that part. Um, how do you define medicinal mushroom and what might be some of the names that people would be uh, seeing on packages or hearing about on, you know, like a Dr. Oz? Right. Well, I get asked that question a lot. and People, of course, are familiar with the button mushroom and, and, and more recently shiitake and, and, and different types of mushrooms in the produce aisle. The medicinal mushrooms frequently, but not always, are not culinary mushrooms. In fact, they may have a very strong and bitter taste to them. Uh, although all mushrooms have um, immune benefits, each species of mushrooms has its own very, very unique benefits. And the medicinal mushrooms have really specific benefits that can help, again, with cognitive health, or, or with your inflammation issues. And so that's how we, we kind of define those more medicinal mushrooms. They, they have complex beta-glucan structures, uh, and they're, they're able to really potentiate your system and help balance your mm -hmm. systems as well. I love over the weekend I was doing a little mushroom prep, and I re-watched uh, one of Paul's um, TED Talks. and. Yeah. He was talking about his mom and actually how uh, while she was going through chemotherapy, um, they used medicinal mushrooms in conjunction. And in my head, you know, I'm thinking, gosh, all chemotherapy, but also vaccines. You know, maybe we can actually help the body take in medication better. And, you know, so I was just thinking about all of these things. But when you and I spoke, one of the, one of the pieces that um, jumped out, and this is also in the guide, is when you should be thinking about, you know, potential interactions. So medicinal mm -hmm. mushrooms, you know, I want the light bulb to go off for people, that ding ding of like, hey, you actually are taking something for a medical value for, you know, to help your body run better. You know, obviously a lot of these are found in the dietary supplement area. Some of the medicinal mushrooms that we're talking about are in beverages or as I mentioned, coffees. And what that can mean is there can be something where the functionality of that mushroom could have an interaction with your um, with your supplement. Or, or with your medication. So a couple of the areas, you, would, you talked a little bit about, you know, such high value, you know, blood pressure, but why, why don't you share um, just the, those couple of medicinal mushrooms and what we want to be careful for? Sure, absolutely. Well, uh, mushrooms tend to work as a tonic, something that should be taken on a daily basis. As they're not pharmaceutical drugs, but rather something that helps with your own body's adaptation. 
right? And that, to me, is the benefit. It's not a drug coming in with a, a push in one direction. It is your body adapting, being able to take in more oxygen, for instance, with cordyceps. But, yes, you're right. Some of the mushrooms, because they have great uh, bioactivity, can help reduce blood pressure. So if you're on a blood pressure medication, cordyceps and reishi, for instance, should be introduced you know, cautiously and, of course, always in conjunction with your, your practitioner to make sure that you're introducing and monitoring your, your medication and, and hopefully reducing that medication over time. Likewise, if you're pregnant, you're pregnant, you should always be checking with your your uh, um, your practitioner. And if you have been on mushrooms for a long period of time, that might be okay to continue it. I, I, I would think that it, it's not the best time to introduce something new to your system because your body's making so many adaptations. Likewise, with you mentioned chemotherapy, you know, that is something that is so fine tuned that, you know, you don't want to introduce something that maybe can be counterindicative. Certainly, after you've been on therapy, whether it's chemo or radiation, mushrooms play a very beneficial role in being able to promote and optimize and restore your immune function, which often has really been compromised during those therapies. Yeah, I love it. And just a shout out to the practitioners that will be watching this, I imagine, at a better time for themselves. Um, you know, it's a great reminder to, um, in this era of fortified foods where we see these included, to have those conversations and to make sure, you know, so I use the Better Nutrition Journal um, or the intake for forms to make sure that somebody is telling me what they're taking. Have them take photos, especially if they tell you they take a packaged smoothie on a daily basis or use a protein powder because we're starting to see um, you know, mushrooms as an, as an ingredient uh, in that part. Okay, where I really, so I want to dive into the part, I know I've got one or two uh, questions already, and I know someone who is watching uh, is, it definitely wants to know this. I am not going to name names of companies, but one of the concerns that does exist out there is it, in the name of doing something really good for my health, um, I'm at looking to add in a medicinal mushroom, and um, so that might mean that I look at a supplement or I choose a beverage or, you know, I'm, I'm any of these things. Um, let's talk about some of the problems that can exist when we're sourcing. So in the guide, we actually break it out into three different areas. We're not going to go through all this tonight. The guide is a component to tonight's conversation. You know, we talk about wildcrafted and we talk about what it means to be grown in the USA, but also how it's grown in, in the USA. And I just want to sort of have a general uh, sense from you, Sandra, of the risks that, you know, as you guys have looked for suppliers and decided how you were going to grow your mushrooms, what are some of the issues that you saw in the industry that people should be concerned about and practitioners too? Yeah, yeah. It's something we should all be very aware of. Uh, and that is where are your products being grown? Not just where they're imported or where they were packaged in the end. Where were your mushrooms grown? Because mushrooms are bioaccumulators, which is great if they're grown on a very healthy substrate in a very controlled environment. Then they're going to be able to take that um, all of the nutrition from the substrate itself. Mm -hmm. However, if they're grown in an area where there's pesticides, toxins, heavy metals, and either the you know and, and pollution in the air, that also will accumulate and come along in the finished product. So, so really important. Of course, we promote U.S. grown products because we know we have um, a lot of regulatory. Um, oversight here in the United States that I feel extremely confident about. Um, and so, you know, we're as other mushroom facilities and supplement makers are regularly audited and have great quality control teams in place. So I think making sure that you know what country of origin those mushrooms are come from. Here's another great example, chaga. You know, I often have people saying, well, shouldn't I be taking wild crafted chaga? Mm -hmm. Chaga is an interesting mushroom that in the wild can take a very long time to grow. And uh, it is often grown in areas in Russia close to Chernobyl. Mm -hmm. And so it is accumulating that radiation so much so that Korea right now, the KFDA, or the equivalent of our mm -hmm. FDA, has made it mandatory that all chaga being imported into the country have a radioactive test 
performed mm -hmm. on the chaga. So this isn't, you know, just a small matter. Again, because you're taking them on the day, a daily basis. And, you know, we actually, many times being at trade shows, I'll have, uh, Chinese visitors coming by and they'll, they'll say, we're afraid of taking our own products right now because we know because of the pollution in China, yeah. what the, the potential is for something that they wholeheartedly believe in. But if it's got uh, toxins, otherwise you're going to be doing more damage than good. Yeah, it's so important. I, I um, am interviewing a friend of mine tomorrow um, about textiles and fibers, um, Marcy Zaroff. And, you know, she really talked to me and, and lit my me open um, enlightened me to the whole notion of just how much pollution associated with with uh, textiles, both with cotton, but also with the dyes. And then when that comes downstream, and so then that's the water, and you know, and often mushrooms grow, as we know, they're you're finding them in all of these places. So the beauty of them is that they can actually. Um, renew life in a place where there was almost no life, but the negative is is that they're the storage vessel for you know those um, those toxins, and so I think that's really important. You know, you said something in there that I just want to make sure that this point is is not lost and and that we enunciate it, and that is actually to know where your mushrooms are grown. And the issue I liken it a lot to you know if I pull my clothing out and I see a um, you know a made in the U like whatever the tag is on here. That can be where the tag was actually sewn in, not necessarily where my fibers um, were from or died in that part. So how can someone actually know where the mushrooms were grown? You know, in term, do you have to go to the manu the company and ask them that part? Is there anything on the labeling? Um, is there anything we as practitioners should be pushing for? Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, the, you know, a, a year or so ago, we went through sort of a, a labeling exercise with many of the experts, uh, mycologists and, and AHPA, who, who led the, 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 the work to make sure that we were all consistent in how we were labeling mushrooms. And one of the things that uh, we had wanted to make sure was a part of that was country of origin, and unfortunately, that did not get included. I think right now, as it stands, the only way you can truly find out is by going to the manufacturer and asking very directly, where are your mushrooms grown? And I know people have done that in certain instances, and the, the answer back is, well, it's complicated. Well, <laughs> mm. I don't know how complicated it is. Where are they grown? Where do these mushrooms grow? They might be processed somewhere else or they might be imported somewhere else, but where are your mushrooms actually being grown? Because that's the point at which they're going to accumulate either good or bad uh, nutrients. And what if they, the company says, like, what are the logos that people can look for? You were mentioning, you know, in the U.S., so I, I also uh, think that the next, the natural extension to that is the USDA organic um, certification. But what, what certifications or information could somebody look for on a package that you think would be a flag for, yes, this is something that I think is going to be uh, a, a, somebody who's telling you the full story and something you, you can be comfortable with as opposed to something that might uh, get you a little bit concerned? Yeah, I think it's I think it's honestly quite difficult um, mm. because people can now put a USDA organic symbol on a product that's not manufactured or grown in in the U.S. Mm. So I think it, that is a, a challenge that we have, and I think that that's another level of clarity for our consumers that we need to go to. Yeah. I, I will tell you, I have been very um, concerned, and I've had people have lab drawn, labs drawn um, where the doctors are treating them and, and looking at all sorts of things from heavy metals, um, just persistent inflammation, couldn't figure things out. Uh, and we've gone back to, you know, things again, like their coffee or, you know, just a protein powder. Um, so I just want to, you know, it's... Uh, make a statement out there to anyone that is consuming a product, um, especially, again, as they're popular and growth, um, you really do want to find out this answer. And if a company is not going to tell you exactly how, um, oh, thank you, Heather. <laughs> she said, we're, cause she's so grateful we're all doing this. Um, and, you know, I think that if a company is not telling you that part, and you actually said something great, we included this in the guide, uh, but in your interview where it's like, you know, we all love those pictures of like foraging for mushrooms, right? And it's 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 yeah. hard to think that instead of foraging for mushrooms, what might be best for us is something grown in a lab. That feels very counter 
um, mm-hmm. to, you know, to our experience. But uh, I think we have to be careful not to fall for a picture there, which, which is yeah. a great statement. So let's get into um, uh, some more of the fun stuff. Um, I want to talk a little bit about incorporating these in because one of the barriers um, that I've seen to uh, people actually getting these in on a daily basis and um, and at an appropriate dose, and I'd love you to share your thoughts on, on what dosing uh, you know would be, is um, that ability, I always say better nutrition better be delicious or easy or we're just not going to do it. So what are some of the go-to tips? And also you said something very um Interesting to me in terms of how you would dose initially, which is counter to what I might have thought originally. So I, I learned our, uh, from you. So go ahead and share that yeah. part too. Yeah. Sure. Well, yeah, having been in, in the integrative medicine and health world for so long, compliance is key. You know, someone can buy a product, but if it sits in the, in the cupboard, it's not really going to be very, very helpful. And if it doesn't taste good or it's, it's a lot of work to work it into your routine, then you're probably not going to take it on a daily basis. And that, to me, is the most important thing. So we have developed several different products with that goal in mind. One is our powders, and, and that kind of came out of everybody getting into smoothies and, and wanting to have their own recipe of different proteins or flax or chias or whatever they were going to put in, then it's much easier to just include mushroom powders in that product. Mm -hmm. Um, We also, kind of leveraging everybody, I hope's interest in drinking lots of water during the day, right? I, I hope everyone's got some water by them. So we developed a drink stick. I realize I've already opened oh, it. It's I've okay, never Sandra. seen this. I have never seen it. I'm so excited. I just want somebody okay. on your end to say, I, like, send it my way. I've never seen yeah. this. <laughs> well, we have several. And actually, how I started this, uh, it's an energy drink stick. So it has cordyceps and reishi, turmeric, yerba mate, B12, vitamin C. So wonderful, wonderful nutrients in it. And it, it came about when my daughter was in high school and came home with some friends who had some of those energy drinks, I won't mention the yeah. names of, you can all guess, right? And I said, oh, no, Haley, I've got something that we can create I know is going to be much better. And this has turned out to be a wonderfully uh, health, great product, great for pre-workouts, but great for just focus and, and alertness and extremely healthy. So um, this is something that I know I and many, many people, it's that daily ritual, right? Mm-hmm. You can include it in your day. For some people, capsules is a better ritual. It's easier if you're traveling. I know it's easier to put them in your suitcase. Um, but we we most definitely agree that you need to take them on a basis, daily basis. Now, getting to the dosage issue, that is really important as well. Um, we recommend taking two grams a day, and all of our products have that efficacious dose. We've uh, been involved in some studies that have been dose response, mm. and we have found that if you double dose for the first two to three weeks, depending on your, your baseline health levels, you will definitely see the improvements much faster. You would likely see the improvements, I'm sure you would, if you took it for 30 days. But we know consumers are extremely impatient, right? They they want to see the difference and they want to see it now. So for that reason, we promote double dosing, either all at once or twice during the day, um, so that you're getting uh, a faster result, really, from the products. And that's another area where, again, because we're seeing so many mushrooms and in beverages and in bars, they're, now with labeling, if it's not a supplement, it's, you don't know how much is in that product. Often it's the fourth or fifth or sixth item on, on the nutrition facts, but there's no information in terms of how much is in there. Is it a fairy dust? Is it a, a full gram or two grams? You would never know from the label. So, you know, again, really important, especially if you're taking the product with a, a health benefit in mind, a mm-hmm. goal in mind. You want to make sure that um, you're getting a sufficient dose. Otherwise, you're going to kind of maybe come to a uh, improper conclusion that it really didn't work mm-hmm. and, and it it didn't work, yes, because, you know, you were maybe just getting a very small amount. 
Yeah, so to all the practitioners that had the same response as me and that were like double dose at the start, you know, you think like you're always like, I'm always like start at half or start at a single dose. And, you know, of course, this this whole piece has to be had in the conversation. And for anyone listening who's taking any medications, and I'm serious about like if it's a statin or if it's a it's fiber or if it's an, a baby aspirin, you need to be making sure that your healthcare team understands that you're going to introduce something new, even if you're introducing it as a, a delicious hydration or energy stick, you know, it, it's really important on that part. But that notion of double dosing um, to start off and see what the, how effective it can be in that short period of time is great because that's also going to give you leverage to understand where you can go from there, you know, because it, again, it's adaptogen, it's, it's, it's yeah. going to adapt in the body. Um, so in terms of that dosing, and actually you brought up a great point, um, uh, led to me to something where we were talking about, uh, you know, what might be in a package or what somebody might be getting. And I think this is a really important piece. Mushrooms, uh, let's talk a little bit about their the entire mushroom as opposed to an extract or an isolate. So I tend to always be a fan of the whole food form of something, whether it's, you know, fish oils or uh, your, you know, your hemp seed or you know, whatever on that part. And I, I think we netted out it most of the time we want the whole, but talk a little bit about what somebody should look for and why, why you guys are choosing to, to most of the time do the whole. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. Even in cranberries, for instance, the research now is very, you know, compelling, right? That a whole cranberry provides much more nutrition than the extract. And I think as maybe scientists, uh, we have felt that if you have a very high level of one single nutrient that seems to be the, what I call the star of the show, then if you put more in, you're going to get a better result. Well, that isn't necessarily the case. That entire cast of characters all play a supporting and key role in the ultimate efficacy of the product. So for that reason, we grow the mushrooms through their full life cycle. And by that, I mean the myceliated stage. And for those of you who don't know what mycelia is, on the planet Earth, mycelia play the, the role in, as decomposers. They decompose organic matter, so plant life can then take up the individual constituents. And without mycelia and our fungal community, we would not continue to thrive uh, as a planet. And uh, and again, Paul Stamets has some wonderful books and, and TED Talks on mycelia and, and how it will save the planet. So there is also unique bioactivity in the mycelium versus the fruiting body. The fruiting body is the shortest part of the life cycle. In, the, in nature, mycelium can spread over hundreds of acres and last over hundreds of years and provides communication between the trees um, so for those of you who've seen avatar and 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 saw that the wisdom of the trees the wisdom of the trees is really that great communicating fungal community underneath the trees so we grow through the full life cycle so that we get the benefit of the mycelium as well as the fruiting body um, lion's mane for instance has a recentings that are specific to the mycelium. Some of the species have a, an antioxidant, I've talked about ergothionine, that is much more prevalent in the mycelium compared to the fruiting body. So, Ashley, just because most people don't really know what I will yay, be talking yay. about. Do we have a demo? Oh, this is wonderful. I do a little show and tell for you today. <laughs> That's awesome. This is reishi, not something you'd put on your pizza, no. right? Yes. <laughs> And the bottom white part is the mycelium. It's like right? an iceberg. Like you only see, you see this top, but there's like this whole world underneath. Yeah. This whole world underneath. This started as some oats in a bag that we sterilize and then we inoculate. Um, and then we allow to grow through. And the magic of the mushrooms is they, they com convert those oats into mycelium. And when they completely utilized all of the nutrition, then they switch gears and they go into what is their fruiting body stage. And this is kind of unique. As you can sell, see, it kind of looks like coral. Almost. Yeah. Uh, and and just has, you know, wonderful, wonderful um, bioactivity in it. So, yeah, so this is, is what we do here. So after we've grown our product, we take care to dehydrate it at, at, at – uh, 
low temperatures, but but of course we it releases the chitin. The mycelium are one cell thick, so the, the beta glucans and other nutrients are very bioavailable. But it makes the the um, the nutrients available in the, in the beta glucans in the fruit body as well. And then we mill it into a powder so that you can not worry if you don't like mushrooms. You can make sure you can consume them every day. I've noticed with it too, um, you know, I think, and you had mentioned this, like when we talk about the fibrousness, especially of the fruiting body, I've noticed that the powders, um, and for anyone from a culinary standpoint, you know, it, sometimes I think people may overload how much fiber they do at one time texture wise. And so a lot of times, like for me, just playing with it, I'll do, I'll blend it in with coconut oil or uh, olive oil or, um, you know, those healthy fats aiding the absorption, yeah. avocado. Um, and I'm careful not to add a ton of fiber. Otherwise, like I found, and I did it, I added the powder uh, to my overnight oats the first time. And I was like, here you go. And then I was like, wait a sec. I got to, you know, I had to get the right, I do have the recipe on the side. I had to get the right blend. Um, uh -huh. So I think just, you know, as people go along, just noting that, that texture, um, I think, is an important piece. So I thought we, we'll, we'll open it up to questions in a, in a moment, um, but I thought we, one of the other things that I personally wanted to know and, and just kind of dive in a little bit too is, as I looked at your products, there are a lot of blends of the different medicinal mushrooms. And so um, just as you sort of like uh, mentally go through that list, are there some that work synergistically together for what you see as like better outcomes? Um, and maybe just walk us through a couple of the popular blends in that way. Sure thing. Um, we have a new blend and a new product called Brain Fuel. And we've combined Lion's Mane, which has the research related to cognitive health, to mood, with reishi, mm. which people often take as an adaptogen. Um, and, and we have seen a lot of people with uh, attention deficit issues, um, with other focus issues, be very successful with those two in combination with each other. Another blend that includes reishi is our fit blend. So we take cordyceps, which has respiratory benefits. It helps with your availability of oxygen and oxygen delivery to your exercising muscles or, or to your organs. Um, but uh, there are cardiovascular benefits, as I talked about blood pressure, so dilating those blood vessels to make sure those that oxygenated blood, if you're exercising, is getting efficiently to your exercising muscles. And so that has been an extremely popular combination as well. Um, you and then got an immediate, when will that brain one be on the market? I think we're all like, I need to put it in my calendar in case I don't remember and I want it now. Yes. <laughs> I think I know some of the capsules are already uh, out uh, on the shelves and our drink stick, which has MCT as well. Ooh, okay. And folate as well um, is going to be available in about two weeks. Uh, best so best place for people to go. Um, I should say also too, nothing about tonight is sponsored. These guys are just awesome to come and talk with me and, Help me out with with my education as a as a result yours. Um, and so I realized I don't even know where people buy your products. Are they like? Do you go to Amazon? Do you go to your website? Are they? You know, do I run into a store? Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, yes, Amazon and definitely our own mushrooms dot com. But we are virtually in all of the the natural product stores now, Whole Foods and Sprouts and Fresh Time and New Seasons and Lawson's and all over the country and, and the UK as well. Um, and now making our way into conventional Wegmans, hy V in the Midwest. Um, so we're really, really thrilled to see that, you know, it, that our mantra was bringing mushroom to the masses. And now we're really seeing that happen. I, oh, I love it. Great. Okay, so I had someone send me a direct message privately. Um, I'm not sure. I have my own take on how I would answer this, but I'm just going to throw it out there. So she says that she's 56, um, dealing with a lot of hormonal issues, and has about 30 pounds of weight in her belly, and she just can't lose. Um, is there a mushroom for that? It's basically, I'm, I'm shorthanding the question. So, um, yeah, so I think, uh, it, you know, I often, uh, it, from the Better Nutrition Program, you know, we don't have any one thing specifically for weight loss. Um, yeah. but I would, but, you know, I will now hand it over to you to answer how you would answer that, uh, from a, a medicinal mushroom standpoint. Sure. The, I think the mushroom that has the most research related to, I'd say, fat utilization, insulin regulation, would be maitake. 
And so it is, uh, yeah, highly revered uh, for uh, blood sugar regulating. Again, mushrooms are balancers. They help us achieve homeostasis in many cases. So if your immune function is is out of uh is overactive it'll help it bring into balance likewise with your insulin levels uh, blood sugar levels maitake can help regulate that it also has research related to making um, fat utilization uh, more readily available which of course we all are interested in Um, so I that would be my go-to mushroom and I'm glad you actually mentioned in particular the insulin piece because she she noted on here that she's been on glucophage and metformin. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, my, my comment back specifically is, of course, we have to look at the whole picture and uh, on that piece. Um, yeah. But I think you could take the information, have a conversation with your practitioner. And then if you do start on something and you do double dose to see the efficient, the, the efficacy of it, um, do make sure that you're tracking your blood sugar uh, so that you can see. Um, we anticipate you'll have great results, but we obviously don't want to crash your blood sugar by having uh, anything go too low um, on that part. So that is great. Um, and then uh, oh, I had somebody who wants to wants us to comment on a specific product. We're not going to comment on the which products are better, um, but what I will tell you is threefold. One, I have the Ashley Cough approved list, which is probably not as up to date with all the medicinal mushroom products and ingredients on the market as I might like it to be, but um, you can always head to uh, AshleyCoughRD.com and check that part out. I also have the Better Nutrition Program Supplement Shop, and so you can see in there what supplements I do specifically re- recommend based on conditions, um, and that's not just my recommendations, that's all the experts that um, I've gleaned information from uh, and, and have shared their, their recommendations with for the Better Nutrition Program. Um, And then I think the third area is there's a reason that I have, uh, uh, I'm here with Dr. Carter and I'm talking about to own mushrooms and not talking to maybe uh, some of the others uh, that are out there. But it is interesting to me to learn, especially with M2 ingredients, that you guys are powering a lot of um, other companies. Now, if somebody wanted to find out how, um, let's go to this, uh, because I think we started down this path and we actually didn't get there, how your, um, what they can look at on, you know, a... um, if I'm grabbing a smoothie and I see something on the back, how do I know if it's an extract or whole? And how might somebody even learn it was your ingredient on that part? Yeah, um, the proper way to, to um, label mushrooms is to define, of course, the, the mushroom species itself. And then if it's an extract, you put it's the extract of, of cordyceps, for instance. If it's a whole food product, then it should be... Um, cordyceps grown on, uh, in our case, organic oats uh, and containing mycelium and fruiting bodies. So it should be spelled out for you. Um, so if you see something with oats on it, in all likelihood it's ours. I think we're the only company in the planet right now that is using uh, oats as part of their substrate. Gosh, who isn't using oats these days? I was just in a big conversation about how are we going to get, you know, the world growing more oats, right? Because it's just we've, we've learned just how, how valuable they are. Um, I also would love to point out, because I, I did the research uh, with you, um, that they're also gluten-free oats, like up in Saskatchewan, where there's no, they're near nothing uh, that could be a pollutant. So, um, you know, for those that are focused on that piece. But I think that's a real win. You know, I, I pick up products all the time right now that just say that they have cordyceps or that they have reishi. Um I, I personally believe that if somebody is just saying that I've done enough uh, food manufacturing that they're probably using an extract, that's not necessarily the case, but I encourage anyone who's manufacturing to spell it all out uh, to get credit you know, on that part. Um, okay, yeah. well, we went over, I, I usually like to keep these to a half hour, but I could talk to you for two hours, um, so <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do this again and, and dive into some of those pieces, um, but uh, I, think that's, I think that's everything we've got here. Was there anything you wanted to share as, as, in your uh, experience with the medicinal mushrooms as, as we close tonight? No, I want to thank you, Ashley, of course, for, for taking time to, to talk with me tonight. And, um, you know, I just uh, encourage people to find their what mushroom will benefit them and take it on a daily basis. And, and I know you're going to have a great story. And, again, not only just for yourself, but for your pets, you were mentioning earlier um, Paul Stamets' TED Talk, talk mm-hmm. speaking about his mother. There's a great uh, University of Pennsylvania study on canine cancer and turkey tail mushroom. Mm. 
profound. And of course, people love their pets, yes. right? And my and, and there's not a lot. My twelve-year-old Labradoodle is at my foot right now. I don't know for those yes. of you who keep seeing me lean down because he still <laughs> wants to play ball at twelve at seven o'clock at night. Yeah, it's great. Yes. <laughs> So, so that has been so heartwarming because if your wonderful four-legged family member develops cancer, what do you, you're not gonna, I hope, yeah. end up in chemotherapy, right? But here's a natural product and it yes. can help prolong and give it a more healthy life. And so, uh, I attend a lot of our, the vet conferences and one of the last holistic vet conferences I was at, there were four speakers on mushrooms. Oh, that's awesome. Isn't that wonderful? And all vets are MDs. So I anyway. I love it. Oh, yeah. that is so awesome. All right. So a couple of things just in closing. Um, first of all, uh, the, the, um, Medicinal Mushroom Guide at the Better Nutrition Program, 30% off if you use the code BETTER30. We also have some recipes in there, and um, uh, at the Ohm Mushrooms uh, website, uh, you can also get, so it's ommushroom.com, you can get the products, but they also have recipes there. I feel like there might be a mushroom menu in the making coming up, so we'll, we'll see yep. what happens on that part. <laughs> Um, and if you have any additional questions, I'm always happy to connect you um, in the future. And especially as practitioners, uh, if you have any questions about supplements, dosing, any of that information, we went in a little bit greater detail in the guide. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm happy to introduce you uh, to my contacts here. Thank you. And thank you to Alex and Elisa and Steve, um, who behind the scenes helped us uh, put all of this together. Um, and I'm just really grateful. I'll see you guys probably at Expo West, um, if not yes. sooner. And uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. You too. Great. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.